Hi y'all and welcome to another installment of Quarantine Cooking with Devin. Today we're going to be making meatloaf, mashed potatoes, beer bread, and green beans. So sit tight and let's get cooking. So today we're going to be starting with the beer bread. Now I tried to make this the other day and failed miserably because I used the wrong kind of flour. I used all purpose flour and you're supposed to use self rising. But I'm going to show you what to do in a pinch if you don't have self rising flour. You can make your own. So we're going to be adding one and a half teaspoons of baking powder per cup of flour. And we're using three cups of flour. And then we're gonna also add half a teaspoon of salt per cup of flour. So we're gonna start with the flour. We're gonna add three cups. And I have a little sifter. I'm just sifting it into the mixing bowl to make sure we get out all the clumps. So this is a half cup. So I'm gonna be using six of these. That's one cup so far. On cup number two. That's the oven. I just preheated it to 350, which is the temperature that we need for the bread and for the meatloaf. We're gonna cook those in there at the same time. Here's my second cup of flour. If you get any little lumps, just kind of push them through. And one more cup. And we're gonna add the baking powder and the salt. All right, so that's our three cups of flour. And you can use any kind of beer for this. Today I'm using, let's see, what is this? Wild Range Brewing Company IPA India Pale Ale. So we're gonna try that. So we added the three cups of flour and now we're gonna go onto the baking powder. So one and a half teaspoons for every cup. So we need Okay, so half a teaspoon for every cup. So we added three cups, so we need one and a half teaspoons. Here's one and three to four tablespoons of sugar. Um, I'm gonna just use this and add like five. Keeping maybe six, let's make it kind of sweet. Okay, sift our sugar through. And now we add our beer. Okay, so I'm just giving the dry ingredients a good mix. And then we're gonna add the beer and pour it into a greased bread loaf pan. So here we have this. I'm gonna just spray the inside of it with non-stick spray. Add our beer. Try to pour it kind of slow so you don't just end up with a whole bunch of foam. And then just mix it until combined. You don't wanna over mix it. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the dough looks like. So here's what it looks like. It's still mixing it up. We still see some big chunks of flour, so we wanna get rid of that. And we're just gonna go ahead and plop that into the pan. All right, so you should have something that looks like this kind of spread it out in your pan and we're gonna pray that it turns out better than last time okay so for the meatloaf and I'm using the same bowl I just mixed the bread in. I just went ahead and rinsed it out all about conserving dishes so we're gonna add one pound of hamburger and today we're making barbecue meatloaf um, me and Jeremy like this a little bit better it gives a little spin on the traditional we're gonna add two eggs We're going to add some barbecue sauce, just enough to taste it, because we're also going to put some on top of the meatloaf um, while it's cooking, but this just kind of adds the flavor into the meat. Um, some chopped dried onions, some garlic powder, salt and pepper, breadcrumbs. I'm using Italian breadcrumbs because Instacart didn't bring me the plain ones, of course this part of course if you know if you've been watching you know I don't like touching raw meat but I'm gonna just go in here and get mixing up 
And already I can tell I need some more breadcrumbs because my meatloaf is pretty wet. We don't want it to be super dry, but we also don't want it to be super wet. So this is really wet. That's not what we want. We want it to start to kind of get firm and so that we can shape it into our meatloaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands off and add some more breadcrumbs. Quite a bit more. Starting to get there. You saw the wet gloopy mess, so now we wanna kind of a little bit more. And a life hack is that this is basically the same recipe I use when I make meatballs. Um, obviously if you're making like meatloaf or meatballs for like spaghetti or something, you don't want to add barbecue sauce. I would use tomato sauce instead. Um, but sometimes I do just make barbecue meatballs and they're really freaking good. And we have them with like mac and cheese or something like that. So now you can see my meat is starting to get into a loaf. So I'm just gonna mix that a little bit more and we're gonna get it loafed in a pan. So this is what your meatloaf should look like in the bowl um, before you put it in the pan. It's pretty sturdy, it's not wet and gloopy anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to a greased pan. Okay, so I have a glass baking dish right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray a little nonstick spray in there. And then we're going to dump our meatloaf mixture into the pan. Now, I just pretty much take this and shape it into a loaf. It's gonna serve about four people. This is one pound of hamburger. Our meat is loaved, and we're gonna go ahead and throw the bread and the meatloaf in the oven. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of barbecue sauce on top of this. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my meatloaf. Sorry for the blinding sun, there's a skylight, so it's like one really bright area in the kitchen. So I'm gonna take my meatloaf and add some barbecue sauce just to the top of that. And normally I would cover it with foil and stick it in the oven for about an hour. We are out of foil, so I'm just gonna set a, another pan on top of this to kind of keep the steam in. And then about 10 minutes before we pull the meatloaf out, we're going to pull it out and put cheese on top and put it back in the oven and let that melt. If you add your cheese too soon, it's going to burn on top of it and it could probably slide right off because of the barbecue sauce. So we're just going to spread that out evenly on top and it will kind of melt down and go on the sides and stuff like that while it's cooking. Okay, so that's what it looks like, barbecue on top. I'm gonna grab this and the beer bread, which is looking like this. And we're gonna throw these in the oven for 350 and they're both gonna go for about 50 minutes to an hour. All right, so now while that's in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and start working on everything else. I got some potatoes, 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 potatoes. Mm. We're gonna, <laughs> just ignore me. Uh, we're gonna wash these and peel them and throw them in a pot with some boiling water. And I know I said I was gonna make roasted broccoli, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and make just a couple cans of green beans because the oven's kind of full of bread and meatloaf right now. I am just peeling these potatoes into the pot. I'm about to boil them in. I'm gonna dump the potato skins out, obviously, before I make the potatoes. But this is just for easy cleanup. My trash can's all the way over there. and. We're trying to make things sample. So I got my pot of boiling water over on the stove. I'm just gonna rinse these potatoes off one more time. Then we're gonna chop them up, throw them in the water. Let that go for about 20, 25 minutes till the potatoes are soft and then we'll strain them and get going on the mashed titers. Okay, the potatoes are going right here in this pot. We're gonna wait for that to boil, let it boil for about 20, 25 minutes. And then over here, I'm just gonna dump some, uh, you can use whatever can of veggies you want. This is just a simple side. I'm gonna just be using some green beans today. And basically, I don't really like cooking with canned vegetables, but I like fresh green beans even less. So I think they taste like dirt, it's just my opinion. I also don't like using all the water in the can, so I typically will uh, kind of just strain that out over the sink with the top of the lid and dump in a bunch of butter. That's the secret to making canned vegetables taste good. So after you've strained most, not all, of the water out of the can, you wanna go ahead and dump that into your pot. 
don't know why I'm trying to teach you how to make vegetables out of can. If you don't know how to do that, there's really no hope for your cooking. Sorry. Okay. But because I'm doing it, I'm just going to show you what I do. All right. That was a lot of butter, but fuck it. If Corona can't kill me, butter can't kill me. Okay. We got our potatoes boiling. Well, they're, it's not quite coming to a boil just yet, but it's getting there. And we got our green beans. Let's take a look at the bread. Ooh, my bread rose. And if you can kind of see, the meatloaf is getting there too. It's probably gonna need a little longer than we initially thought. We just wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through nice and good. I'm gonna take this bread out here in a second and uh, put some melted butter over it, stick it back in for just a couple minutes, and then we should be good. So I've just melted down some butter and we're gonna go ahead and put that on top of our bread here. Just gonna brush that on like we're painting a masterpiece. Geez, I did not know baking powder was so important. Guess I learned my lesson the other day. <laughs> Hopefully this gives our bread a nice buttery flavor too. We're gonna put more butter on it when we slice it. Beautiful. We're gonna stick that back in the oven. Open it up. Okay, so we just pulled our bread out of the oven and we're going to pull it out and put it on a rack. Probably upside down isn't a good way to do that, but we're gonna let that cool off. I'll flip it over and we'll slice into it. We're gonna go ahead and cheese the meatloaf. Looking good. All right, stick that baby right back in the oven and we're almost done. Take a look at this bitch. This is bread and I motherfucking baked it. All right, so I'm just gonna slice a little and see what it's like on the inside. It's still really hot, so I probably shouldn't be doing this yet, but I don't care, I don't wanna try it. So that's what it looks like. I'm gonna put some butter on this baby and let you know what I think. It's pretty good, it's kinda like a big biscuit. You can definitely taste the IPA. <laughs> we'll see what they think. How you wanna try a piece on camera? Yeah. That's why I was peeking my head around the It corner. tastes like IPA. <laughs> it does. It's not overpowering, but you can definitely tell. I might just go ahead and hit you with like kind of like a, a grapefruity aftertaste, you know? Okay, so mashed potatoes, you can't really fuck it up. I just strained the potatoes and stuck them back in the pot. Now we're just gonna add a whole bunch of butter and some milk. Like I said, you can't really fuck it up. So let's just add that. Mmm, like that. And around here, we don't mind if our mashed potatoes are kind of lumpy. If you want them to be less lumpy, go ahead and use a hand mixer, but I'm literally just kind of busting them up with a spoon, stirring it up, and that's what we're doing today. Salt and pepper, you're good to go. So somehow I still kind of burnt the cheese on top, but it's going to taste good anyway. There's the mashed tatas, there's the green beans, and there. But yeah, there you have it. A simple, easy dinner, and let's see what the boys think. How's it, baby? Ooh. Mm. That's real bad. Fucking it up, fucking it up. Jeremy's still doing the dishes. We'll get his opinion in a moment. All right, babe, how is it? That's all you have to say today? <laughs> it tastes fucking delish. It's too good for words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. I'll